in the majestic domain of Asgard, where the Norse gods reigned supreme, things were never boring. But as magnificent as Asgard was, it was about as secure as a sieve when it came to keeping out unwanted guests, especially those rowdy giants and trolls from Jotunheim. One fine day, while Thor, the beefiest of the gods, was out flexing his muscles and swinging his hammer at these troublemakers. In strolls this mysterious stranger, riding in on a sleek gray stallion like he owns the place. With an audacious proposal, he offered to erect a colossal wall around Asgard, capable of repelling any invasion from both the giants and trolls. He vowed to construct a wall so towering that not even the mightiest giants could scale it, and so resilient that it could withstand any onslaught from the trolls, ensuring Asgard's impregnability against all threats. In exchange, he didn't ask for riches, but instead demanded the hand of the radiant goddess Freya in marriage, along with the sun and moon plucked from the sky. Freya seethed with indignation at this audacious proposal, the mere notion of a commoner daring to request her hand in marriage, infuriating her to no end. The gods hesitated, cautious about embracing such exacting conditions. They were reluctant to gamble the fate of the beautiful goddess for a mere wall. However, the allure of the proposal, promising unparalleled protection that the wall would offer, tugged at their desires. However, Loki, the cunning mastermind, interjected with a shrewd plan. He suggested that the gods impose an impossible deadline for the wall's construction. Under this scheme, if the builder failed to complete the wall within the allotted time, the gods would not have to surrender Freya, the sun, or the moon as a reward. Additionally, the gods would receive partial completion of the wall as compensation, thereby avoiding the need to sacrifice Freya. Although Freya had her doubts, the other gods, influenced by Loki's scheme, forged an agreement with the mysterious builder. He would be granted just a single winter to complete the wall, with no aid from anyone else. Failure to finish any portion by the arrival of summer would result in forfeiture of his reward. Additionally, the gods solemnly swore to protect him from harm while within the walls of Asgard. As the first rays of dawn paint the sky, the Builder wastes no time and begins excavating the earth with a fervor that rivals the breaking of a new day. Before the sun has even reached its zenith, he's already embarked on a journey to the mountains. And when the gods stir from their slumber, the following morning, there met the sight of him sauntering back into Asgard, seemingly unfazed by the Herculean task before him. While he's adhering to the agreement by working solo, it's his horse, Svadilfari, that steals the spotlight. This magnificent creature, with muscles rippling beneath its sleek coat, hauls stones of such immense proportions that they carve deep furrows into the earth. As the seasons change and winter surrenders to the gentle embrace of spring, the builder continues his relentless march forward, undeterred by the icy blasts of blizzards or the relentless onslaught of rain. Like a force of nature himself, he persists, his determination unwavering in the face of adversity, with a deadline looming closer with each passing day, the gods can't help but feel the weight of impending doom upon their shoulders. With just three days remaining until the arrival of summer, the wall stands tall, with only the gates left to finish. And with the completion of the wall comes the realization that they are on the brink of losing Freya, the very essence of beauty and fertility, and with her, the sun and the moon that illuminate the world. In their moment of desperation, their thoughts turn to Loki, the trickster whose cunning plan set this chain of events into motion the gods' voices thundered with fury as they turned their wrath upon Loki, their threats dripping with menace. They vowed to unleash torment upon him, to subject him to unspeakable suffering, and even to end his existence 
if they were to lose their beloved Freya. Now, Loki finds himself in hot water as the other gods brandish their anger like a sharpened sword, ready to wield it against him if he doesn't rectify his blunder. Feeling the heat of their wrath, he hastily assures them that he'll set things right and then takes off like a bat out of hell, driven by the urgency of his predicament. Under the cloak of night, the Builder prepares to embark on his mission to retrieve the final stones. But just as he summons Fare Fari, a vision of ethereal beauty emerges from the darkness, a mare of such mesmerizing grace that even the stout-hearted steed is spellbound. With his master's commands fading into the background, Svadilfari's resolve crumbles in the presence of the enchanting mare. Ignoring the repeated calls echoing through the night, he abandons his duty and races after the alluring creature into the shadowy depths of the woods. Despite the relentless pleas of his master, Svadilfari remains ensnared by the irresistible pull of the beautiful mare, heedless of the consequences of his infatuation. The Builder's rage ignites like a wildfire when he discovers the deceit that has been woven around him. With a thunderous roar, he undergoes a transformation into a towering giant, seething with fury and prepared to unleash chaos upon those who dare to deceive him, but his wrath proves to be his downfall. Thor, wielding Mjolnir with the strength of thunder itself, strikes the giant down, and the colossal figure crashes to the ground in the heart of Asgard. With a resounding thud, the giant lies motionless, vanquished by the god of thunder, his formidable presence now reduced to a mere memory upon the sacred grounds of Asgard. With the last stone firmly set in place, the gods exhale a collective sigh of relief, congratulating themselves for narrowly avoiding disaster. However, amidst the celebrations, there's a conspicuous absence. Loki is nowhere to be found. Fast forward a few months, and Loki saunters back into the fray, nonchalant as ever, with a breathtaking grey foal by his side. It's none other than Sleipnir, Odin's newfound steed, an eight-legged marvel whose swiftness puts even the fleetest of horses to shame. But where did Sleipnir come from? As fate would have it, Loki became a bit too comfortable in his disguise, and from the union of Svadilfari and Loki emerged none other than Sleipnir himself. In those ensuing months, Loki embraced his unexpected role as a parent, devoting himself to the upbringing and nurturing of his newfound son. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to get more content like this.